video will walk you through steps four, uh, four and five of the modeling natural selection activity. At this place, you should have checked out the first video and done steps one through three, and you should have uh, your data table one and data table two completed. It should look something probably similar. It's probably going to be a little bit different. Um, your Padlet board, you should have all of your alleles off to the right at this point. Probably deleted a few as well due to, uh, you know, rolling a one, uh, causing the white mouse to die um, or uh, survive or the brown mice to die if you rolled the one. So what we're going to look at is how to do the genotypic and phenotypic ratios. Um, I've added up my number of mice with brown fur and white fur, and I found that uh, these tally marks, they add up to 40. And uh, these tally marks underneath white uh, added up to to 10. So what this is saying is that for every 10 white mice, I was getting 40 white mice. So if I got, uh, say, 10 more white mice, if I were to expand this out and I were to say, now that like now I got 20, that means that this one's going to go to 80. Um, I added 10 more to 30, that would mean this one goes up to 120. Uh, it's a little bit simpler to think about if you reduce it, though. Uh, so to reduce this number, which is a nice number to, to reduce, the lowest number I have is 10. So I can divide that number by 10 and then divide the other side by 10, which gives me a uh, 4 to 1 ratio. 10 divided by 10 is, is 1. 10, uh, 40 divided by 10 is, is 4. So another way you can think about it is for every one white mouse you were getting, you were getting 4 browns. Down here for the genotyp, genotypic ratio, um, this added up to, let's see, this was 10, this was 30, and this was 10, which would give me a ratio of 10 homozygous dominant, 30 heterozygous, 10 homozygous recessive. Yours might be a little bit different. Uh, we can reduce this one as well. You just take whatever number is the lowest. Uh, in my case, it's, it's 10, and they divide every number by 10. So 10 divided by 10 is 1, 30 divided by 10 is uh, 3, and 10 divided by 10 is 1. So what this number tells me is for every one homozygous dominant brown mouse I was getting, I was getting three heterozygous brown mice and one white mouse. So I have my genotypic ratios completed. And uh, the allele frequency for this generation, it's already completed for you, but I'd like to demo it for you because you'll have to do it for the remaining generations. So here's how you can get these frequencies for generations 2, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, you'll have your tally marks, and what you need to do is you need to count up how many homozygous dominant individuals you are. We already know that there's 10. And we know that each of those 10 individuals have one, two dominant alleles, right? So that means that this one has uh, two, this one has two, that one has two, all 10 of these have two. So that means that of my 100 alleles, 20 of them were homozygous dominant, uh, or 20 of them were dominant. Heterozygous, I know is one big B, one little b, and I have 30 individuals here and all 30 of these have just one big b so that means of these individuals there are 30 big b's so here we had 20 big b's here we had 30 big b's and if we had 20 and 30 together that equals 50. homozygous recessive we know was little b little b and since there are 10 individuals, each containing two little b's, that tells us there are, there are 20 little b's there. And that tells me, that, let's, see, let's see, 30 individuals here, each of them have one little b. That means that there's also going to be 30 little b's here. So again, 20 plus 30 is 50. That adds up to 50. So when I add this number and that number together, I get 100, obviously. 50 plus 50 is 100. 
And that should be what we get because we started with 100 cards off to the left and 50 of them were big B and 50 of them were little b. So let's check out how we get our frequencies. Um, let's get a calculator on here really quick. I know that um, I have 50 big B, 50 little b. That's 100 if you add 50 plus 50. So what percent is big B? Well, I have to take this number here, 50, and divide that by my total, 100. So if I take 50 and I divide that by 100, I get 0 0.5. 0 0.5 was my frequency. And to convert that to a percent, we slide our decimal two times to the right, giving us 50%. Let's do a, another sample. Let's just make up a number here just so you can see this. Let's suppose that uh, in generation two, uh, after we're uh, starting, um, we, we have, uh, let's say, I don't know, 45 and uh, let's say 40. How do we do this one? Uh, let's get our percents just so you can see this example. 45 plus 40 is 85, right? So I need to take 45 divided by 85. Let's see if I can clear this. Uh, 45 divided by my total, which was 85, gives me a frequency of 0.529. I'm going to round that to 0.53. So 0 0.53, which is 53%. And then 40 divided by 85. 40 divided by 85 gives me 0 0.470, so 0 0.47, or 0 0.47, which is 47%. Now you'll notice that 47 and 53, they add up to 100 as they should 100%. Um, if yours round, uh, add to like 99, it's due to rounding, not going to be the end of the world. Um, but this is how you calculate your allele frequencies um, as you're going through. Definitely reach out to me if you're struggling with, with these two steps.